Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Fassen and uh, today we are going to look at a uh, tinted uh, sunscreen and we are going to look at uh, the tinted sunscreen from uh, Bioderma. They have one and it looks uh, like uh, this. And uh, it is called uh, Bioderma and it's Photoderm Nude Touch and it is an SPF of 50 plus. So uh, what is a uh, the main thing about this one here, well obviously it's that it has a tint, uh, but uh, another thing about it is that it is uh, this sort of a technology that is um, that it goes from being a liquid to being a, a powder uh, on your skin. And I would say I tried it uh, the other day on my uh, hand and it does become very uh, powdery uh, afterwards, give, give this sort of a matte uh, finish. So uh, for that, that is a, a good thing. Uh, but um, there are some uh, strange things about the, this product because um, I bought it uh, here in, in England um, at a pharmacy that was called uh, Mi Pharma, uh, CO uh, UK. And um, I thought it, it came from a pharmacy here in England, but uh, apparently it came from a pharmacy in Spain, so from uh, España. And uh, I got uh, this package here, and the first thing I thought was a bit strange is that it doesn't say uh, anything about what's in it. It doesn't say anywhere, uh, well, it says that it is a bioderma sunscreen that's in it, but uh, it doesn't say what the ingredients is. So I thought, okay, well, it obviously it will be stated on the bottle itself. So I took the bottle out and had a look at it. And it looks like this. It doesn't say anything about what's in it. I don't know if that's something, uh, a Spanish thing, that they don't tell you what's in the products. I, I, I just thought it was a bit odd. So I had to go uh, into the uh, to the web page of uh, the company and have a look. And uh, if you just go to the uh, .com site, then uh, you will not find uh, this product here. Uh, you have to go in uh, under various countries. And I found it, found it in... Um, in, in Spain. There is uh, some other issues uh, about uh, this here uh, because uh, on the package it is in Spanish. So it says uh, Alta Fotoprotección Anti Imperfecciones Ultra Medificada uh, and so on in Spanish. So uh, when you look at the product, it doesn't say anything in Spanish. It says something in Italian, it says something in Germany or in German, or it says something in, uh, in French. Uh, it, it's a bit odd. Uh, but um, well, it is um, an SPF of uh, 50 plus and uh, there are uh, some issues with this product, um, how it uh, performs or what they promise or something like that, because they say that uh, in this product here, there is something that they call fluid active. Um, and that is uh, some sort of a patented thing that is supposed to uh, make sebum uh, flow. So it doesn't clog the pores. So this product as such is a, a, an anti-comedogenic um, thing. So it doesn't clog your pores. Um, it might be very uh, well, but uh, if that stuff works so very well, I don't understand why they have added something else uh, to uh, the product, which is known for uh, declogging pores and letting a sebum flow, and that is a salicylic acid. So why would they add that if uh, the other stuff that they have a patent on is working really, really uh, well? Well, I don't really know why they would do that. But the thing is, uh, this uh, product here is a mineral uh, sunscreen. So there are no uh, chemical uh, sun filters uh, in or UV filters in this uh, product. A lot of uh, UV filters, they are based on um, salicylic acid. Uh, it, they are derivatives of a salicylic acid and there can be some issues with it. Um, but uh, at the moment, a lot of these uh, UV filters are on the EU list of uh, suspected hormone uh, disruptors. So we will have to find out what the final verdict will be on that, uh, well, in some years' time. Uh, but another thing is that uh, salicylic acid itself has already now been uh, found to be a hormone uh, disruptor. So uh, to find uh, salicylic acid in a product uh, like this that you are putting on your uh, skin for the entire day, day in and day out, I would say it is not something I would do. Um, it is more different uh, if you have a salicylic acid maybe in a, in a face wash or something like that, that you're having it on for a very short period of time, maybe it's not a problem. But having it on a day in and day out, I would say that is not something uh, I will recommend uh, to do. 
So um, how does this stuff perform on the skin and what is the color? Well, the interesting thing about the color is that if you go into the Spanish uh, site then uh, and you tap buy, uh, it says that uh, the color is uh, for this product here is a uh, tono natural. Uh, that means it is a natural color. So obviously what they are saying is that this color here is natural color. So that obviously implies that if you don't have this color on your skin already, your skin is not this color, apparently it's not a natural color. That is obviously a little bit strange. So this product here comes in a three uh, versions. So this is the lightest one, and then there is a golden one, and then there is uh, another one uh, as well. So three different colors. But still, I feel that uh, the colors of this product here uh, is meant for skin like mine that is a bit tanned, a little bit more tanned and a very tanned. It is not for people with naturally darker skin tones. So again, yeah, it's it's a bit of a, yeah, an issue. So if we just see how does this uh, color then perform? Well, the first thing you have to do is that you have to shake it well, uh, or as it says uh, at the back or the front or something like that, it says here, it says uh, bien agita or Bien a guitar, something like that. You have to shake it up. Like, like that, that must be enough. You don't have all day. And certainly not if you are on the beach. Uh, so yeah, we uh, add a little bit what is kind of like equal to half a teaspoon because it will have to go on the face. So now I will just put it on half this, on this side here on my face so you can see uh, the difference. So we, we don't need a full half teaspoon, we just need a quarter of a teaspoon or something like that. Rather too much than too little. And they say reapply uh, during the day. So obviously that will give you a very strong tint. Okay, we just put it on. And they actually say that you should put it on uh, after you have used your moisturizer. So I just have a, a moisturizer on today. No powder, no nothing at all. And I don't have anything else but um, I don't have a, a sun filter on already or something like that and there was no sun filter in my daily moisturizer so this is just my moisturizer and serums so we put it on so I will say that it is a very light uh, cream and uh, on my hand it did uh, turn into this sort of a powder thing I can just add something at the back of my hand so we can see how uh, that will uh, perform now I will say Today it is um, it is early morning, or relatively early morning, uh, but um, it is uh, very, very hot here in, in England. And I think yesterday or the day before, it was uh, the hottest day of record for the last 17 years. So uh, I might be a little bit sweaty, and that means that it's, this stuff here might have a bit more of a difficulty coming into being um, this sort of a powdery thing. But again, there will be countries that are very hot all year round. So this product needs to be possible to use in those countries as well. So as you can see, yes, it is a, a light color and they say um, very light or something clear something. Um, so this is um, very uh, light. Now uh, the thing is, as with the other uh, sunscreens, um, usually when they are tinted or if they have maybe because they are mineral sunscreens, they sort of like produces some sort of heat on my skin. It might not do that on your skin, but particularly around where uh, my eyes, uh, around the eye areas where the skin is thin, uh, it sort of um, gives this sort of uh, warming uh, effect, which tells me that there is something in the product that um, maybe is not going that well with uh, my skin. So yeah. This is obviously something that you should um, not just streak out and streak out and streak out because it is a sunscreen. So you should not put it on as if it was a light uh, colored uh, foundation or something like that because it is a sunscreen and you need to put it on as 
a sunscreen and then the color of the product comes second and if you put it on as a sunscreen and you feel that it is too much color well then it's it's just not the product for you. And I would say you should go for the untinted version instead. And I don't, um, I think they do have a, a mineral sunscreen as well, but I don't think they have uh, this one here as um, an untinted version in itself, but they do have an untinted mineral uh, sunscreen as well. It looks a bit different. So yeah, does it start to be powdery? Well, it's still very shiny, so just give it a bit of time. And again, now today I have a little bit of a beard going on, and uh, a lot of people will have that. Um, so it just means that it sticks into the beard area. And that it, it does not look nice. It looks like you're putting foundation into a, a beard, and that, that rarely looks nice. Um, so yeah. Um, this is sort of uh, the color uh, on my skin. So if you see uh, the difference uh, from where I did not put it on and to where it is uh, put on, then you can see there is nothing on this side and uh, there is uh, on this side. So this is uh, the most light uh, color they have. And I would say it, um, when I look in the mirror here, and it might look a little bit different on camera, but I would say it is it's to the sort of a yellowish uh, side. So it's not to the reddish side or orangey. It is more, I would say it's um, yellowish. Um, but uh, what is it that they put in uh, that uh, creates uh, this sort of a uh, color? Well, uh, we just uh, have a quick look on this hand here. As you can see, it is still uh, very uh, shiny. So it'll take a little while before it uh, becomes uh, this uh, sort of a powdery finish. Um, the other day when I tried it on, um, it wasn't as hot as it is uh, today. So it was a couple of days ago. Uh, so that will have an influence on how the product is uh, performing. But again, if you are in a, in a country where it uh, it's very humid and very warm, well, uh, the chances that this product here will become very uh, powdery is maybe not that great. So what is it that they do in order to uh, color these uh, products? Well, they are using something that is called the uh, iron oxides and it comes in various uh, colors. And that is what, uh, for example, uh, Aven are using, or uh, La Roche-Posay, they use uh, these uh, three colors here. And then they use uh, a little bit of uh, titanium uh, dioxide uh, as uh, well. It, this is sort of, um, it's a mixture of uh, colors. So it is uh, uh, basically uh, the red and the yellow and the black uh, mixed uh, together. So it's not a, an individual color as such, so it's a mix. Um, and yes, could you use these colors uh, and just add a little bit of it to the uh, sunscreen and uh, create a darker tone? Yes, you would be able to do that. Uh, and I will show you uh, in another video where I will get hold of a, um, a mineral sunscreen which is very uh, whitish and then uh, see how we, we can work with these colors in order to make it a more um, customized to your own color uh, and you will see how little you actually uh, need because this stuff here colors uh, rather a lot. So I will show that uh, in another video. So uh, another video uh, that will be coming up is a, a product, uh, it's also a sunscreen, or oh, it's a daily moisturizer with uh, a sunscreen in it. So a daily moisturizer with uh, an SPF of uh, 50. And that is from uh, a company called uh, Cetaphil. And, uh, why I wanted to show this today is that on this product here, you can read on the side what is in the product. It says up here. So I really don't understand why um, this product here from Photoderma, uh, the Photoderm one from uh, Bioderma, does not say on the box what is in the product. I, I really I thought it's strange. But as I said, it might be that in Spain you don't need to do that. But I just thought, well, Spain is part of the EU. So I thought that the regulations would be sort of uh, the same. But um, Yes, it might be that you don't need to put all this stuff on, but I'm just thinking it's it's a bit strange. So uh, if you are from Spain, please let me know in the comments uh, below. So uh, yes, this uh, was a sort of uh, the verdict uh, on this uh, product here. And still, you will see it, it still shines. So how long should you wait for it to become a uh, powdery? And if I put my finger through it, it is really, it's liquid uh, still. It's, um, it just, 
it doesn't really sink in. Uh, the other day, as I said, it was uh, not a hot day. Um, it was kind of like maybe maybe three days ago. It was kind of like a normal coolish uh, British uh, summer day. Um, so uh, today it is really hot and sweaty, and it was that yesterday as well. But the point is that when it is summer and you will be using these sort of uh, products, yes, there will be people using these sort of products all year round, uh, but particularly people would go for it in the summer um, and there it will be very hot and sweaty and I would say that I don't think this uh, stuff will perform uh, very uh, well. I think it will perform uh, well in the winter time um, on a, or on a cool summer day here in, in England or in Northern Europe or something like that. But uh, yes, if you are sweating a lot, um, it just... Um, you can feel that, yes, there is some sort of idea behind what they wanted to do, but the reality is that um, it just, um, well, it just keeps smearing around, really. Um, so, um, yes, uh, uh, this is not a sort of a product uh, I would uh, buy again, um, and I'm not going to use it, I just will use it for this sort of a test here to show you how uh, the product works. It is not something uh, I will um, sort of um, recommend uh, recommend uh, to anyone um, unless as it's in the winter and so on and it might work really well being this sort of a powdery uh, finish but certainly not on a day like it today. And uh, I can say that uh, it is very hot here and I actually have my feet uh, placed on a uh, these sort of uh, things that you're putting in uh, a cooler thing. So one of these uh, frozen things you can put in your freeze and take with you when you are going out for a picnic in the summer. So that cools down my feet. So yeah, it kind of like helps me keeping the temperature down, but still it is very hot. So it doesn't really um, perform very well, I would say under hot conditions. So the ideas behind the product might be very well thought through and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I would say in reality, it's um, sort of a, a different uh, prospect. And in general, I would say, if you want a, a sunscreen, I would go for one that is uh, not tinted. Uh, that is my verdict because the other stuff is, it, it's difficult to, to work with because you need so much on your skin that it will not perform uh, well unless you like the sort of a cakey cakey uh, look and some people like that uh, it is not for me so uh, yes I would say this product is uh, not something I will uh, ever use again so if you would like to see more of this sort of videos please subscribe hit the bell and do all those things you must do in order to be notified when I upload more of this sort of uh, videos thank you for watching see you bye